What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today is the day that I say farewell to my dear friend, the Canon C200. This is such a phenomenal camera, 4K 12-bit raw, 60 frames per second at 4K, super 35 millimeter chip. You have built-in ND filters, built-in XLR inputs. You have a shotgun mic at the top where you can attach a shotgun mic to get quality audio. You have a slew of professional features like Zebra, Waveform. You also have Canon's dual pixel autofocus if you're familiar, spot on. It has the option to have face only, face priority, which comes in handy when you're really trying to lock on somebody's face. It's just a great camera. You also have the option to go from the 4K 12-bit RAW to use 4K 4208-bit, which is something that I guess made people hesitant about buying this camera just because it was in that in-between like you get on the Canon C500 or the Canon C70, which is the 4K 4222-10-bit, which we all kind of prefer just because it saves a lot on file space. Canon C200. I've shot music videos with it. That was one of the reasons why I purchased this camera. I had clients recommended me for projects. They was like, well, we want to shoot like raw. And at the time when this camera dropped, I believe it was like $7,500, which is a phenomenal price for a camera that does 4K 12-bit raw. I wish you could do 422 XAVC. I think the C70 is really what we wanted in an updated version of the C100 because the C200 was supposed to be that, but it didn't quite give us that, because what was great about the C100 was the battery life, the image quality was solid, you just wanted 4K, you wanted some of the newer features like face tracking. Um, the C100 has face tracking only with specific lenses, but um, the new cameras that came out, you have the image stabilizer built in, while Canon C200 doesn't have the image stabilizer built into the body, but you can still take it in post and add you know, some warp stabilizer to kind of smooth out footage if you go on handheld. And you just want to rig it out properly. Use small rig. It does come with a top handle, but I love small rig just because it allows me to add these add-ons right here. So it gives me that flexibility to add accessories. And I got the nano mount would make it a little easier to slide off when I'm packing it up or depacking it. And when I want to tighten it up, bong, bong. Love that. So, uh, small rig, great company for reasons like that. I want to flip the screen around. We have that. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't be more happier with the C200 experience. So, yes, I believe it's a great, viable camera option in 2021. Um, am I sad to see it go? I am a little bit. But, you know, being someone who can be a little techie and gearhead heavy sometimes, I realize it is important to unload equipment that I'm not using as much, invest that money back into my productions or buy another camera. That's one of the things I kind of do. So if I'm not using a camera as much, then I will go ahead and you know um, sell that. In this case, I'm selling it on eBay. Someone purchased it last night, picking up the box to package everything up nicely so I can get those reviews. So if the person was buying it, watching it, understand the work I put in, get the bubble wrap, make sure everything is wrapped tight and neat and nice and make sure things are secure and, and fyi one little quick side note about ebay i haven't seen too many people do a video on it yet but just be very very careful because you, you get a lot of people who try to fraud you and the way they go about doing it is they contact you they say oh i'll give you this amount of money right now but my account is not working can i pay you on paypal and offline you want people if you're selling on ebay you know i always recommend selling in person you probably see a video on this before but if you're selling on ebay they gotta hit the pay now button and do not ship off your item until that money is available in your paypal account because what they try to do is they said the money is pending and if the money's not if the money is pending they say the money is pending it's not in your account do not ship off your items because they'd be contacting from overseas they get you to ship off the item they got a fake ebay account then they get your equipment they send it to like a p.o box somebody picks it up and they rob you of your money so and i'll put a link to show you what that kind of looks like in the email so that works all right cool um yeah so just be careful my two notes if you're selling on ebay make sure for one they use ebay to, to pay now when it goes over to paypal make sure the funds are available in your account before you ship your product out do not get caught up 
like that is a telltale sign when people start to hit you with like oh i'll pay you more i just need to get it right now just be careful like it's one percent of the time when that might be a legit legitimate person 90 99 percent of the time people are rushing like oh yeah i'm gonna give you a little bit more money i just need to get it because of, i need to buy it for my cousin or i want to ship it inside the states those are like telltale signs like when people are like i want to ship it inside the states you didn't even look to see if they was living in the states yet because they're really trying to play a little game on you so be careful pay attention take your time sell your equipment get your money back and uh yeah how we got on the subject when i'm not using the camera i make sure i offload the camera i sell the camera take that money either put it in a savings account put it in some crypto put it in some type of investment get a return on my investment so i have that money ready to buy the next gear that might help out my production or my storytelling if i need to so yeah um that's my rundown i think i mentioned everything about the canon c200 i love the weight i love the size built-in nd filters built-in xlr inputs lcd viewfinder is pretty solid the newer cameras lcd viewfinder is a little bit sharper but you can still i see people in a group all the time they actually buy the newer canon c300 mark III viewfinder and they hook it up to the canon c200 you can do that uh what else battery life is not as great as on the c70 or the c100 mark ii that was one of the things i had to learn really really fast that battery life eats eats up on the canon c200 but the other thing about it is just keep in mind any camera with face tracking is is running the battery life down a little faster so if you got a locked off shot if you take it off continuous continuous auto face tracking you might save a little battery life but c200 batteries do run fast especially when you shoot 4k 12 bit raw there is a fan but i never had a problem with the fan it cuts off as soon as you record it i love the form factor it's very much on par with the newer c300 mark 3 c500 mark 2 image quality do i think my c500 mark 2 blows it out the water i think what made me buy the c500 mark 2 is that the 422 XAVC 10 bit looks as good as the 4K 12 bit raw out of the Canon C200. So that's not really a knock on the C200, it's really just a compliment to how great of a camera the C500 Mark II is. But that's a price tag of $16,000, so keep that in mind. So C200, which you could normally get for less than $5,000 right now, anywhere from $4,000 to like $5,000, is just a great price bracket. And yes, the and I'm gonna do another video on that. The Black Magic Pocket Cinema 6K Pro has just come out. I do love the fact that Black Magic Design added ND filters. They added the XLR inputs. They added the uh, EVF viewfinder, which is dope. But that it's a different bracket than the C200. It's a different bracket than the Canon Cinema cameras and the Sony Cinema cameras. Everybody got their own thing. But if you're looking for something to do wedding filmmaking narrative documentary running gun stuff check the internet there's been professional commercial shot on the canon c200 there's a movie shot on the canon c200 it's just a great option to have and for the price point right now i think it's actually better than what it was when it was seventy five hundred dollars brand new just because you can get it for a great price so if you're gonna get a c200 i recommend getting the c200b i purchased the c200 accessory kit basically the original C200 has the LCD viewfinder on the back of the camera, the viewfinder on the back of the camera, which allows you to see in the sunlight. But the thing about it is, is when you want to use it for gimbal work or a B camera, it makes it cumbersome. So you'll see a lot of people preferring to get the C200B over the original C200 because you can trip it down and do a little bit more with it. And more than likely, you're going to have an external monitor on the top of this camera if you're really trying to do some dock shooting just to kind of get a cleaner image and get false colors and some of those added features. So I have the C200 video kit uh, accessory, video accessory kit which I really love and enjoy and I would have definitely got the C200B over the original C200 that came with the LCD viewfinder uh, and I wouldn't have said that when I had the C100 but after having my experience with the C100 I hardly used the LCD viewfinder it was good every now and then yes it added an extra point of contact but overall it was not something that I was thrilled about or excited about so I would get the C200B in addition to that, I would say, yeah, just check other people's opinions. Everybody got their own thoughts on what they would have got or what would have been their purpose about it. And um, anything else I can talk about the C200? I think that's it. Feel free to comment down below if you got questions. Think about subscribing to the channel. Turn on notifications to be ready for the next video I post. And 
I think in last, man, it's no such thing as the perfect camera. It's like, what is the perfect camera for the job? What is the perfect camera for your budget? What is the perfect camera to keep you telling stories and not break the bank, to keep you motivated, to keep you going within this film industry, creative industry? That's what it's about. It's not about buying what I have or buying what the next person has. It's about you making an investment that allows you to move your story along or get your story out there. Ultimately, that's what it's all about, telling stories. So... With that said, we're going to wrap this up. Like always, stay creative, be courageous, and get on your grind.